Wow, that's interesting. Green light. We've been enjoying our vintage racers. Uh, usually they're done by Ertl, Highway 61, the ones that we've been unboxing. This one's a green light. Um, looks cool with the details so far. What, what year is this from? 2011. That's weird, a factory hole in the bottom of the box, but the car is still sealed. Never seen that before, look at the number on it. Mm. So we're gonna unbox that, but first we need some jug up. Well, yeah guys, how you all doing? I'm just out uh, driving around while my brain is completely like mush uh, with no seatbelt on. That's what you hear chirping away in the background. I'll put that on. For uh, fines and pullover purposes. I don't want fines or pulled over for no seatbelt. We'll go this way maybe. I'm going to head over to the burger factory. I've been doing a lot better with not eating out, but I'm tired today and I figure give myself a little treat. So I'm going to go get some jalapeno poppers. They're not quite as good as Miracle Man out on Six Nations. Miracle Man is, makes the best, but um, they're okay. They're pretty tasty. But I need some jug up. I, you know, I need the nutrition to do these unboxing videos. Come on. I can't just unbox it and not eat and be starving while I do it, right? So, come on. At least I'm not tripping out. I'm tired, but I'm not like tripping out tired where the lights are all brighter and everything. And yeah, when I get that tired, that's when I sit at a red light for a couple minutes and then just drive away through it like it's a stop sign. I've done that a couple times. Luckily, there is no cars around, but that's tired. But I'm not that tired, thankfully. If I was, I wouldn't be driving. We're not going far anyway, luckily, so. I don't know if you guys heard uh, before the unboxing, just making some small talk. I don't know if you guys heard about uh, if you guys are Redline Club members, I think my Redline Club membership finally expired, which I'm okay with because there's nothing lately that I want to order from them. Um, but apparently, my friend showed me an error message he's getting, and it's not really an error message, but it's a message on their website that says basically, we're not shipping to Canada, sorry for the inconvenience. According to them, it's a mistake and it's they're hoping it'll be fixed by friday but it's like wow the amount of money they make man you would think that they would have a better website oh i'm starving i just want to get home and then we'll get this sucker unboxed okay i'm doing 70 and a 60 but is that not no i'm not i'm just kidding but is that not um quick enough like you really had to blow by me in the right hand lane like it's not like you're needing to pass me or anything but okay some of these people think that you're racing them eh? it's funny pull over pull in waiting to hear back as well oh and shit I missed my driveway okay uh, waiting to hear back from a guy as well for a smoking deal for Glenn, actually. Uh, it's for a car that's in Quebec, a 1 of 18 scale movie car. But keep you guys posted on that. Anyway, let's get in there and get the jug up. Okay, guys, we got our jug up. Um... That's what we were doing. We were actually uh, picking up food. We weren't really going to a place in Stony Creek called Alex's Bathhouse or anything. We were actually uh, 
just picking up some jug up. That's all. See if we can get out of this weird ass driveway. Ooh, they smell good. Cannot wait to get home. Okay, hurry up, you dildos. Okay, I'll go with that if you're not gonna go, bud. And now he goes, what a fucking, what a moron, wow. Wow, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I was sitting there waiting for people to go. The guy sits there, doesn't go, so I said, okay, I'll go. And then as soon as I go, he has to go. Get home and unbox and go to bed. Tomorrow's a good day, it's BD. Yeah. Hopefully we can find some good deals on Marketplace. Oh, you want to know something funny, by the way, guys? So Glenn's loose Knight Rider car. Well, actually, I'll show, I'll show you guys. I found the same car on Kijiji. Somebody's selling it. Check, check this out. I'll show it to you. Here's what I mean when I say shop around, guys. This is shop around personified right here. Glenn paid a hundred for the same car. And the ad says it's the Hot Wheels version, but then it mentions about um, the gadgets working, like the ejector seat and stuff like that. The Hot Wheels version doesn't have the gadgets like the ejector seat, so... I don't know, maybe if you want to sell something and just completely just, you know, bend somebody over, maybe do some research before you put up your ad. Sorry guys, I've been on a tear lately, just about greed in the hobby. And when I make these uh, comments and jokes, it's nothing against vendors, by the way. I got lots of friends that are vendors. If you're on my Facebook friends list, you're a buddy. So I'm not referring to you or anything like that. If I didn't like you, you wouldn't be on my list. I wouldn't talk to you. This is the guys that go into Walmart and clean out the pegs and then try to sell them all for a ridiculous price. And... Like, vendors have suppliers, and they do things properly, right? But a lot of the guys on Marketplace, they don't even wait till they're out of the store before they're putting the picture up. Like, you could see the store in the background. Like, Jesus. But just, yeah, what got me going was seeing an $8 car. It's the uh, Toyota 4Runner. It's a Hot Wheels car that me and all my buddies got for each other. You know, it's eight bucks and people are charging 35, 40 bucks a car. And it's like, it's still in some of the stores for frig sakes. You know what I mean? Like that is completely, like I said something in a post yesterday. I said, if you're finding yourself paying 40 bucks for an $8 car, you might want to reconsider who your friends are. So my view of it guys is when you do that to people, it comes back like you might think you're making two dollars five dollars here and you might think you're winning but then in a month you need a car and you can't get it you end up paying that to somebody else because people remember that you know what i mean like all these the uh, hot wheels cars that i see like the spoon honda civic that's another one that like they're dinky car size right the Spoon Civics in the stores right now for eight bucks, there's people charging 40, 45 bucks. You cannot justify that. Like, there, it, and it's not supply and demand because it's not a rare car. Like, uh, no matter how many times you go in and clean the pegs off at your local Walmart, it doesn't mean it was produced less. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you can't screw with the market and make things rarer. I hate to say it, but it doesn't work like that. But, Charging people that for stuff, and uh, the thing is, guys, I don't talk shit. A lot of people know me in my area, and a lot of you viewers are in this area, so you can find out if I talk shit and if I scalp stuff myself, and ask around if I'm a scalper, say, is Neil Donovan a scalper? See what people tell you. <laughs> I, I practice what I preach. I'll just say that. Um... Yeah, and treat others the way you want to be treated. And karma, I believe in karma. And that's why I don't completely gouge people when I sell stuff. And yeah, I get taken care of when I buy stuff.
give you an example. When I was selling off all my stuff, I was selling a lot of it for basically retail and it didn't matter what it was. It could have been a chase and it, it's there's a good chance you were getting it for retail. I had a bunch of the uh, Hot Wheels. If you don't collect Hot Wheels, they do these ones that are called Zamex and they're in a limited number. It's almost like a chase or a treasure hunt. Um, and they made Honda Civics this year, this last year. Of course, they were hot. It was the Honda Civic hatchback. I ended up getting a bunch of them in the store. They're two bucks each. A couple days later, I see on Marketplace. The one good thing about the Marketplace scalpers is they let me know the new stuff that's coming out and what's on the market because I'll say, oh, those are coming down the pipe. The scalpers got them, you know what I mean? So it lets me know what's around and stuff. But within a couple days, I seen those being sold for $20, $25 each. And people were paying it. And I was like, oh my good lord. I gave so many of those away. There's a viewer that watches my videos. He's probably watching this video. That came over to my place that bought stuff from me. He couldn't get any of those Zamex Civics. Because of these ass wipes grabbing them all to scalp and all that. And I surprised him with one. I gave it to him. And I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was my last one. But these are toys, you know what I mean, guys? Like, it's treat people good. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, that was my last Zamic Honda Civic. I gave him. I'm not naming the person, but he's watching the video. If any of you guys want to call me out on it, don't believe me. I'll get permission and I'll name him and get the guy to comment. But I'm pretty sure you all believe me if I say that I do something. But yeah, it made his day because the poor guy couldn't find it anywhere. Like he wasn't, he was smart enough to not pay 20 bucks like everybody else was doing, but he still wanted it. So it was a catch 22, right? But I'm glad I was able to help him out. Show you guys my jug up here and then we're gonna get into the unbox. Anyway, sorry about the ranting guys. It's just my, just to clarify, I got nothing against scalpers. It's these weak, or I got everything in the friggin' world against scalpers. I've got nothing against vendors. It's the weekend warriors that are running around, you know, like just cleaning off the pegs to help out their buddies. You know what I mean? If you're charging somebody or if somebody's charging you $40 for a car they paid eight bucks for, I hate to tell you, they ain't a buddy. Ooh, hello, hello, you sexy beast. Okay, guys, enough of that. Let's get into it. Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to get into it. Now, the good thing I like about green light is they're modern, so there's no base. Um, they, they're kind of made to be taken in and out of the box without damaging everything, which I like. Why this hole's in the bottom of the box? I don't know. Everything's still sealed. Like there's a blister. Like the, nothing can get into the car through that hole. So I don't know the purpose of it. I've never seen that before. It is from the factory. So I don't know why it's like that. So the shape of her looks a lot like the bullet actually. As you can see, nothing really to read you guys. But I think it was a real car. It's not a fictional car. We will pull her out of the box. So. You guys know. Uh, well. The viewers that have been around for a while. Know about my past life. And about how I turned my life around. A number of years ago. I was going through pictures of my cell phone. To free up some space. And I found a couple of pictures. You guys are going to kick out of. I'll show you before the video ends. Old pictures, I will say that they're very old pictures, and I'll explain more when I show them. But yeah, let's get into this. Now, this is going to be factory sealed, this has never been out of the box. There's actually no tape on the box at all, a lot of green lights, there's no tape. It's got plastic. Uh, like a sheet of plastic 
over parts of the car inside, but I like how it's on that plastic tray that just kind of comes out. You don't gotta unscrew any base. Makes it a lot easier to do an unboxing video, I'll tell you that. But I still want to know about that square hole in the bottom. This is the first green light I've come across with that. If any of you guys know the answer, let us know in the comments. Oh, she's beautiful paint so far. I'm not seeing paint rash. Although I will say with green light, I do not see a lot of paint rash. I have seen paint rash, just not a lot. Oh, and Glenn, this does have a band holding the doors shut. A lot of green lights don't have bands. This actually has a band holding the doors shut. So we, we did have to open it. <laughs> I thought it didn't have a band. So. Now with this here, it's got tape. So you don't wreck your plastic here. It's got tape here and here and the same on the other side. So just make sure you get the tape so you're not wrecking your plastic because this is all goes for your value if you sell it down the road. If you're missing all the inserts and your box is chooched, then uh, you're not gonna get what you want for it. But very easy to unbox green lights. They're always a pleasure. It's even got like a knob thing on the bottom that I'm holding. See that? Mm -hmm. Like it's always like it's designed to. I think most of them don't have that, but this one's there. I swear it's perfect to hold. It's that's why they put that there. I think. Hey, so she is free. Let's get it out. Green light has some great quality with certain stuff. Uh, the Fall Guy truck, um, beautiful. The Bigfoot, beautiful. It's almost like when they're the only guys that have the license for something. It's like they say, look, we're the only ones with the license. So let's knock it out of the park. Got the plastic over the nose, that sheeting I told you about. We're going to keep that. We're also going to keep the plastic sheeting that's on the back of the car. Jimbo's Pure Oil. I don't know if these are actual sponsors from back in the day because this is a vintage racer or if it's fictional. Car's name is Go Go Gone. Before the end of the video, I'm going to look up and see if this is a fictional car or not. Kind of in the way of bullet, it doesn't have the uh, pony at the front. The wheel steer beautiful. That's not good. Well, I bet you it's not broken. No, it glue let go again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't worry. And that's weird. <laughs> I'm not going to knock green light because glue lets go. Although this is not a very old car. So I'm surprised. But yeah, that's not broken. It's a matter of the glue let go. Mm -hmm. But at least it happened here and not on the highway. Oh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. But see, guys, just the glue let go. That's all. Not a big deal. Uh, but this, usually it happens with the older castings, like the Ertles from the early 2000s and stuff. Like, if you remember Glenn's American Graffiti car, the Impala, the white one, mint, box was mint. Open up the hood, the manifold was loose inside the hood. I had to, or the... Uh, wasn't the manifold, it was the uh, valve cover actually. But a uh, little dab of glue and it was all fixed. But yeah, this is from 2011. So odd that the glue dried out. Maybe they just didn't use enough glue, but the rest of it's perfect. And this is a very, very easy fix. Came off nice and clean. And see, it just, it doesn't snap on, so it'll come back off. So we're going to have to glue it, but good enough for the video. Um, so a lot of the older Ertles, the hood does not, or the trunk does not open. This car, as well as the green light bullet, the trunk opens. So if you need a Mustang or the bullet car, the bullet Mustang, and you got to have the opening trunk. I don't give a shit about the trunk opening, but... 
If you gotta have it, go with green light or go with uh, auto art. Don't go with Ertl because the trunk doesn't open. So we're staying away from the beautiful paint that I do not see paint rash, by the way. Actually, I'm gonna see if this has a flap on it to get that. And it does, okay, boom. Sometimes you can get the little mm -hmm. flap that's on the band. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Okay, so all debanded. I'm gonna leave the tire off for now while I'm showing you guys. And then when it's up on the look-see set, we will put the tire back on. And I'm gonna pull out Glenn's green light bandit, or bullet to put beside this just to kind of compare because they're very similar oh i like how the center console they put the blue inlay unless they just forgot to paint it no it's on purpose because it's got black in it that center console that's a very cool feature uh gold shift knob Looks like the e-brake is up, if that's the e-brake I'm looking at. Uh, seats usually go forward a bit in this one. The seats do not move. Not a big deal. It's not like we're putting passengers in this. Now here is the bottom of the car. I don't know how many of these were produced. But a lot of green lights have a number and this one, it, green lights, they put a nice clear number and this one is number, oh, it's a nice low number. Gwen, number 142. Does it have many? I don't know. Okay. It could be thousands and thousands. So that's a nice low number yeah. for this. Uh, his green light bullet Mustang, it's a shame because it's just came from the factory. It's like a lemon, like the way the doors are sitting on there and everything, because it's a very low number, uh, the green light bullet he has. But unfortunately, it was made on a Friday. This one's beautiful, though, the way the doors open. Um, show you guys from the driver's side. See, everything opens beautiful on this. This is the way I wish his green light bullet opened. The, the low number one, rather. The green light bullet that he has with the figure, that one's mint. Um, it's the other one that he has that's not mint. And there is on the back window. I am going to look this up before the end of the video, guys, to... Let you know if it's a fictional car or not. But very nice details inside. Now let's see if it's got the same engine as Bullet, the 390. Oh, shit. Uh, looks like it, even though there's no decal on it or anything. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what it should say on the box what the engine is, but it looks like the 390. Could be wrong, but. You know what? I'll look it up because if it's a real car, it'll say somewhere, but it does look like the 390, guys. Looks very similar to Bullet, except painted different under the hood. But let's have a look at the look-see set at this uh, three-legged wonder here. And I'm going to find out if it's a real car in the meantime. Well, guys, I wouldn't leave you hanging. I told you I would do some research into this car. Um, from what I see, it's a fictional car. Uh, because I typed in the Go Go Gone Mustang. All that comes up is pictures of this die-cast. And there's a picture of one that says it's a tribute to the Jimbo's Pure Oil uh, race car. So I typed in Jimbo's Pure, Pure Oil race car. And the only thing that comes up is pictures of this guy. No pictures of the real car. I'm going to go with it's a fictional car. But it's still beautiful. And we know that it's one of those vintage stock racing cars that we love. So let's have a look.
So this is not the Ertl guys that I'm always going on about how I love. This is the green light version, which is pretty decent. I just like the Ertl better myself, personal opinion. But just to show you guys how close this is to this Go Go Gone Mustang. Who's that dildo in the car? Who is that? Mr. McQueen, you blew your tire too. So that's how close they are. The Steve McQueen sit down figure that came with the green light car was made for it. It actually fits in the blue car, which is pretty cool. And a cool part about that for you younger guys that don't know this, uh, Steve McQueen also did racing as well, car racing. So. He probably would have liked this car. Even looks kind of cool sitting there propped up like that. Just has a cool look to it. Right down to those hood vents, eh guys? Like look how close these are. I'm gonna quit playing and take it off the tires so we can see how they both sit. And by the way, I was right. Bullet is the 390. Mm -hmm. And this is the 390, guys. Uh, this is actually just like Bullet. It's the GT version. GT on the side. Now, the Bullet car, for those that have asked me before, doesn't have the Mustang emblems. Most of the Ford emblems, that's the way Steve McQueen wanted it. Maybe he just wanted it to have a cleaner look. The detailing, guys, is so, so close. The only thing different is the way the air cleaner is um, painted. But same engine, same mill. So, guys, it is a 394 speed, uh, just like Bullet. I believe Bullet was a four speed as well. Um, I know it wasn't an auto. And I just found out something about this. You know how it's got the serialized chassis? There's only 1,800 produced. Doesn't say anywhere on the box, but Google's my friend. So guys, if you knew how to paint well and how to paint boots, you could basically make this car and turn it into a bullet. It does have some different trim. Like if you notice down here, these lights here, they're not on this guy. I don't think, no, no lights there. So some of the trim is a little bit different, but even the height of them and everything, guys, like that's, that's the same. I know some of you might wonder, this figure here is made by Greenlight and it actually came with this car. Um, there's a lot of people now that are recasting these figures, but it was actually made by Greenlight. And what I like about it is it looks like he's sitting in the car with one hand on the wheel, one hand on the shifter. And for anybody wondering, this fits in to the Ertl bullet as well. So there's guys that recast these. This is the one that I want to get. I remember I was going to order one before, but I didn't because I didn't know if it would fit into the Ertl one. And the seller said, you know, the models vary, right? Luckily, the Ertl bullet, unlike these guys here, the seats in the Ertl bullet go forward. So they have a little bit of play. So I was able to fight him in there and he looks good sitting in the Ertl bullet as well. Looks awesome, actually. So this is what I want to get for the Ertl bullet is the sit down version. But I mean, if I couldn't get the sit-down version, like if they sold out, everybody bought them, they went extinct, whatever, I'm perfectly fine with the stand-up version. Uh, one of the stand-up versions, apparently, what I've seen, it's a 118 stand-up McQueen figure by Greenlight. You actually bought it in the store, in the package, and it came with the 164 bullet car, which I thought was pretty cool. But now to get them, it's... I wish I could just walk in Toys R Us and yoink. So you see guys, he doesn't just sit, but it looks like he's driving. That's what I like about that one. 
One last look, same rims even, only Bullet has the chrome center caps to separate it a little bit. Holy crap, there's been some weird stuff going on at the Cowie Diecast Museum lately. Check this out. I don't know what's going on there, guys. Just to show you, it's the same diecast car, the same one of 18. Green lights don't have lights. All of a sudden, when I wasn't rolling, this can this uh, the bullet car spun around and acted like it was gonna charge at this car here and it's lighting it up in the lights. Those lights are bright too. Look at this, McQueen is trying to go after this other Mustang. But he quit moving when I came over here, but he forgot that the lights are on. How cool is that, guys? I will say, those lights work better than the green light, uh, or not the green light, the Auto World silver screen machines like my Christine car. Wow. Holy crap, guys, look at this. You got McQueen and Christine. And for anybody wondering, you see how the one headlight on Christine looks a little bit dull for anybody that has this? That's authentic from the movie. It's supposed to look like that. Your model's not faulty or anything. It's meant to look like that. But how cool do these look, guys? And I love the yellow light on the uh, Bullet Mustang. Christine's has like the eerie white glow, like it's got a spirit with it. Somebody was complaining saying, oh, that doesn't look real because they used LED lights. It's supposed to look like it's glowing, like it's got a spirit and that's what it looks like. But how cool do these look? Glenn, are you in here? Yep. Look at these. And LED lights flying around the back uh, when Christine was made. Yeah, but they, it looks good in the white because mm -hmm. it's supposed to look like it's a ghost, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, Alex was saying that, oh, it's not right, and I tried to explain, it's supposed to look like it's a ghost. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, guys, there's something that we didn't notice about this car that uh, I just noticed, and I was like, oh my god, Glenn, because it's Glenn's car. Come check this out. This is one of the ones from the big haul at the Dixie Flea Market. Check this feature out. Uh, what could be better than the headlights and taillights? Let's have a look in here. Boom! Look at the gauges, guys. Light up gauges in Mr. McQueen's Mustang. I can't believe that. I was looking... I think I noticed it through the back window. I was looking, I said, what is that lit up? One last look. And one last look at this girl with a little bit of light on, so you could tell it's Christine. Looks cool in the dark with just the headlights, but need a little bit of light just to show who she is. Wow, guys, my videos have a way of taking a twist sometimes. It turned out, or we started out the video about this guy right here. And the funny thing is, when we did the unboxing video for Glenn's Mustang here, originally months back, like in the summer, I think we forgot to show off the light feature. The reason we didn't show off the light feature is because when Glenn got the car, we said, oh, this sucks. The lights were so dim and nothing else came on, just the headlights and they were very dim. I said to Glenn, hopefully it's just dead batteries. We put in dead batteries, boom, tail lights, running lights and headlights all came on. And then I didn't notice until, so you guys didn't see that until now, that feature, because we didn't really have it before. And then I just discovered tonight about those dot, the cluster lighting up, like that's wild. So a crazy story about this car, guys, I'm going to tell you, and then I want you guys to give me your opinion on it to see if this is uh, real or not. So 
when Glenn brought this home, it was him and Dave that went and got this. Okay, from the Dixie Flea Market, the place I got my Hot Wheels Elite Herbie. And we came home with a big pile of grails that day, like if you go back in my videos. Glenn got this with Dave a separate day. He came home and he said, I got the Bullet Mustang and it has working headlights. And I said, you must not have. I said, you must be mistaken because they didn't make one with working headlights. And he was at him and he said, no, it has working. I said, Glenn, they did not make it with working headlights. And he said, well, no, the guy that sold it to me um, said that he sent it back to the factory and they did it for him at the factory. So um, I guess the story about this, the guy at the Dixie Outlet Mall told Glenn that he sent this to Greenlight. See the bottom lights? headlights and these don't look like the white leds like the crisp white light like christine because christine's supposed to look ghostly that's why it's like that it's not supposed to look realistic these yellowish lights are realistic and they really flood like it was flooding this white car with light when we had the lights off up there you could really notice it I'm trying to show you guys here but i'm too tired to uh, but anyway, this, that's the story the guy told Glenn, was that he got this car, sent it away to Greenlight, because I guess Greenlight was at one time performing this modification. I don't know how much it costed. Now, at first, I said to myself, that sounds like bullshit. I've never heard of that. I have never heard of Greenlight doing that. But what makes me wonder is it's such a clean installation guys um like the way the lights are in like you don't notice anything hacked up like that button there nothing's hacked up like it looks like it's all like that's the same type of toggle switch that christine has and it's funny because if I would have opened up the trunk, well, I did open it up earlier, but we didn't notice this in the trunk, I guess. But um, it's just such a clean install. It doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill custom. So what do you guys think? I've tried to look into this. I don't think I could find anything about it months ago when I looked into it, but I'm going to look into it again. But tell me what you guys think. It is awesome. I mean, this is awesome, and it's worth every penny. You guys seen how it looked in the dark. That thing looks amazing. Um, but what do you think? Was Greenlight doing this at one time? Like, were, were they offering, you know, send us back your model and we'll modify it and put lights in it? What do you guys think? Is it real? Um, the only thing that makes me question it is that clean install. Like I said, no wires sticking out, nothing loose. Like, it's... But then again, people are getting pretty good with customs nowadays. So, I don't know, guys. Tell me what you think. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, they, oh, I'll show you. Uh, no, I'll wait till another video. Those pictures I was going to show you, I'll wait till the next video to show you guys the pictures. Just old pictures of me from uh, the 90s, that's all. Uh, but next video. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please smash like for me. And that way we could keep uh, spending all of our, our whole check at the end of the month on this stuff to keep opening it and killing the value for you guys. So if you press like, at the end of the month, we'll take our whole check, spend it on diecast, and then open it up. So click like for me. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, share with your buddies that collect die cast and collect other toys, vintage toys like this. And as always, guys, happy hunting.